What is up guys, this is your boy Venge here bringing you yet another video, but this video is going to be called Retro Squad Review. You're <laughs> gonna have to stop you right there, Venge. I got a better title for you, my boy. Use this Retro Vibe Reviews. This seems to flow off the tongue better. So now, you can go ahead and get back to the review, bro. Remember, Retro Vibe Reviews sounds so much better. Alright, and I hope you guys are enjoying the gameplay in the background, the music in the background, and I figured I'd add extra for the people that like extra in their videos in case they're not watching this as a podcast and they want something to look at. So in this series, I'm going to be discussing anime that I'm sure a fair amount of the current generation of anime watchers know nothing about because this anime was around when I was born. I'm talking about anime that was from the 80s and 90s. So if you want to check out the anime that helped make anime what it is today, then you can definitely check out the Retro Crush app on your phone because this bit is insane. You can literally watch anime for free and it's straight up legal. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Free anime, dude, on your phone. Freaking awesome. No subscription required. And so to kick this series off, I'm going to talk about the cyberpunk detective anime known as Bubblegum Crisis. And in case you guys do not know, I actually reviewed Right Stuff Anime's very own AD Police to Protect and Serve, which was a spin-off series that paid homage to Bubblegum Crisis. Come on. The robots were also called Boomers in the AD Police series that I reviewed. Whereas the anime that came before that, Bubblegum Crisis, they were called Boomers! So, Bubblegum Crisis, I said, Crisis brought the boom! So, let's go ahead and talk about Bubblegum Crisis. Now, the protagonist of this anime series is a group of females. And they're kind of like a mercenary group known as the Night Sabers. <laughs> yeah, doesn't that sound like uh, something that a rock group in the 80s would name their group the Night Sabers? Savers? Did I say savers? Not life savers, but I mean light savers. Like light savers, night savers. Let me shut up. Anyway, they took it among themselves, amongst themselves, to hunt down extremely dangerous robots that were being used by a corrupt corporation to terrorize the city. And so why don't we go ahead and talk a little bit about episode one, which started off pretty heavy with an overhead view of the city. And then you have an instrumental that begins to play in the background. One of the protagonists that goes by the name of Pris, one of my favorite characters, is dressing up to perform the vocals for the instrumental that's already playing in the background. As we're getting clips of action scenes between a boomer and the AD police, now as the AD police is getting flexed on big time, as Pris started the vocals, oh gosh, dude, the music was funky, fresh lit. That don't even make sense, but whatever. The opener really got me into it. Great music, action, and a little bit of fan service. And with that said, definitely be advised to watch with caution if you cringe at the sight of a bit of skin but just remember it is not a lot of skin not so much skin it is going to make your blood run out your nose no nose bleeds or nothing like that but it's definitely there so i wanted to let you know so back to action team of night saber actually took out a boomer that leon and his team were pursuing at the time and leon observed the battle and after they wrecked the uh, Boomer, Leon was just handed the L, but dude, why did the Boomer sound like a cow? Boomer was like, moo, it wasn't like boom, but moo, like, <laughs> sound effects was a bit cheesy, but you gotta keep in mind, this was made back in the 80s, but I, I highly believe that this is still worth watching, because I enjoyed the first episode. Chris 
is the savage member of the female babam squad shooting down any man like a pro call of duty player like the poor sap from the ad police that was trying to get all up in a kool-aid after the performance that took place in the opener and his name is leon he was really trying to get those digits but pris was like you got the wrong number because she was giving him those shoulder checks man just sharing how much she hates the ad police now Chris claims that the AD police isn't known for doing a good job when it comes to actually helping people, so it's one of two things. Either the AD police does whatever it takes to get the job done. For example, if their decision is going to cause a lot of bloodshed, they would go that route. Or it's just the simple fact that if pressure is put on them, they'll stop the investigation instead of following through to help other people. So it's one of those two avenues. So there was lots of corruption in this series. You know, reminds me of our government, but I'm not going to go there for now. Maybe this is something that I'll talk about in the live stream, but okay. Um, you had the Space Defense Force hiding secrets. Then you had the big cheese of the genome group that um, is using the boomers to their full advantage. Now this boomer project that the Space Defense Force is hiding, they're trying to use the night sabers to actually help cover up the secret by literally destroying it or just capturing it and then keep the news hush hush. And then you have the big boss of the Genome Corporation making under the table boomer deals like a drug dealer. And so now you got Big Boss Man from the Genome Corp asking his associate, who goes by the name of Mason, to ensure that they don't get exposed like a typical anime villain. But dude, the Big Boss Man, he was cheesing, lounging, comfy chair, and everything. But I'm not gonna lie, his voice acting sucked hard. <laughs> it was very weird. Out of all the voice acting, that I heard in episode one, his voice was by far the worst. And then after all those scenes, boom, more fan service. But this time, the leader of the Night Sabers, Celia, not crazy fan service though. I mean, she had a One Piece, not the anime, but One Piece is lit, but we're talking about a One Piece swimsuit. So she's swimming into a flashback of her facetiming her dad when she was i guess like a teenager and she facetimed him before he died in an accident involving a boomer project but at that time i don't believe the robots were called boomers because it looked as if it was there was a different purpose for the boomers at that time because it sounded like her dad had good intentions and with that said somebody had other plans they wanted to use that boomer technology for something evil and so they decided to make everything look like an accident and you know ooh, the accident killed them you know that sort of thing and so then, um, what happened after that? In her flashback, she received a package, and this package actually contained a wealth of information that literally exposed the wrongdoings of whoever was responsible for the accident. And so with that said, there was a split second where you actually see Mason's face with Encilia's flashback, which makes me believe that he plays a huge part in this series and so it's revenge time then after the flashback we get funny interactions with the leader's pervy brother yeah he was looking at Celia the wrong way and then you have a meeting between the members of the night sabers and the night sabers agreed to take on the job that was given to them by the special defense force be quiet phone no one it could be a trap but the question that I have is, why on earth did they ride the bus to get to their base? I mean, they literally had wings on their back, and I, they they was flying earlier in the episode. So, 
why would they have to take the bus? It makes absolutely no sense, but that's just anime logic. If somebody has a nice explanation about that, you can put it in the comment section below. And so, the Sabres turn down the job to search for the girl after learning that the defense force was doing some shady stuff. Something about using a camera to to peek at the goods. Or, you know, that's... That's the best way to describe it because they weren't, they was not having that. I was like, we out, you look, you're trying to look into too much. And so they decided to save the girl on their own. And they told Pris, everyone agreed that what they're going to do is they're going to keep in contact and then they're, go they're not to leave individually. They got to leave as a group. But Pris went off on her own without her tech and she got captured by a boomer now the thing is i like pris she means well but the thing is she's very reckless and so with that said i don't know how pris escaped by faking being knocked out but somehow they fell for that i don't understand how but she did it in order to obtain information and then she escaped using somebody's motorcycle literally telling the dude that she'll give the motorcycle back but we all know he's not gonna get that motorcycle back and so the boomer goes after Pris and then Leon noticed the chase and he decided to follow and so Pris finds the girl but the pair was assaulted by a group of boomers fortunately the rest of the night sabers was able to save Pris and the little girl and Pris used this opportunity to escape with the girl but yet again she gets sad swiped by yet another boomer but fortunately leon was able to come in and provide some assistance and he decided to hold off that boomer while she makes the escape with the girl but wouldn't you know it another rejection because as she was escaping the lead boomer was evolving fusing with the entire facility that they were inside and she wind up getting separated from the girl that she was attempting to save so she had no other choice but to leave and get her suit in order to provide more assistance the team was struggling without the assistance of Pris, which shows that teamwork is vital in order for them to get through the missions. Uh, because when Pris arrived on the scene, they was able to work together to put an end to the threat. However, during that process, they found out that the little girl that they were saving was actually a boomer because she was literally being absorbed by the lead boomer that was extremely powerful. They really had a hard time fighting that thing because of how big and gigantic that boomer was. It literally evolved to the point where they was even shocked that that was even a boomer. They wasn't accustomed to that. Um, it was even hinted that this technology wasn't technology that they were familiar with. It was some kind of new kind. And so that it, the episode was great. Um, the episode ended with more fucking music and episode one was just great to me I mean the music was slapping to me the action was pretty good um, for its time and most of the voice acting was decent to me it was alright uh, but of course the sound effects sounded terribly dated but I mean just think about the times guys I mean that's an 80's anime so you're going to hear some cheesy sound effects every now and then. So, another thing that I want to point out is the fan service wasn't over the top. I mean, it wasn't over the top like one of the anime, one of the many animes that I actually reviewed in the past. I love Pris. I mentioned this a few times already because she's a straight savage. And then Nene, she's just fun to listen to. Um, and just so you guys know that there is an English dub as well as the original Japanese voice acting with subtitles. So you can pick however way you want to watch it when you download and watch Bubblegum Crisis on that Retro Crush app. I highly advise it. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to enjoy watching it. I highly recommend that you guys check out Retro Crush 
free anime. You can't go wrong with that, and who knows, you might find some old school classics that you actually will enjoy. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this review, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Peace and God bless.